our Adventure Canada. My name is James and we're up here about half an hour north of Montreal for a last minute little trail. I know I haven't made a video, posted a video to YouTube in a while, so I've made some major, major modifications on my discovery. Check it out, got some portal axles on and it's just, the difference has been night and day. But today, we're gonna hit the trails. I wanted to make a video when everything is finished, but it seems like it's never gonna be finished. I still got tons of work to do on this discovery. I gotta get the back the back bar redone. I got a back winch that's going on. I need the back uh, swing arm made. I gotta redo the front pool bar as well. But if I wait to get everything done, it's like I'm never gonna get another video up on YouTube. So today, we're out for a little fun. We're gonna meet Andre. He's gonna uh, be in Igor's uh, Land Cruiser. We got uh, Vlad coming. We've got Maurice here. So you know what? We're gonna hit the trails and have a little fun. And don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We're at the entrance of the trail. Unfortunately, Igor needed his Land Cruiser today, so Andre found a backup vehicle, a Discovery 2 that was lying around the parking lot of his garage. It's gonna be interesting to see just how capable this stock vehicle is. You really don't need to spend a whole lot of money on fancy modifications to go out and have a good time. All you have to know is your limitations and your vehicle's limitations, and you'll be amazed at just how far you can go. This is Maurice and his Discovery 2, a very capable vehicle. He's got a back locker and 33 inch BF Goodrich mud terrain tires. Up next we've got Vlad in his Discovery 2 with limited slip differentials. I'm the last one to make the way into the trail. I've got 37 inch super swampers and portal axle, as well as front and back lock. It's going to be interesting to see the difference with these four discos today. It's all with different builds and different levels of modifications that have been done to the vehicles. It doesn't take very long to find the first obstacle in this trail. Basically now we have three options. One side is very easy, then we've got the middle. That's not too tough, but it can get deep and the bottom is very soft. And then we got the side that I decided to take. Out of all the years I've been coming to this trail, I've never seen any evidence that any vehicle had passed through this side, but that's not going to stop me today. Well, that's not a good sign. I've never had my vehicle stall before. At this point, I just wanted to get out of this mud hole and figure out what the problem was before too much water made its way into the cabin. As soon as I managed to get myself out of this mud hole, we popped the hood to check out what the problem was. That's when we realized there was a small crack 
in the air filter cover and a little bit of moisture had gotten inside the air filter. We dried it out and kept on going. Like I said before, I've been coming to this trail for a long time. In this section, the ruts are a little deep, and before I had 37 inch tires, before I had portal axles, my diff would always drag through the mud. Look, you can actually see the evidence, a little groove in the mud from the previous person who passed before me. But now with the portal axles, look at the difference. I'm nowhere near touching the ground. This is one of my favorite parts of the trail. You have about three or four little water holes, one after another. I tell you, it's not the hardest trail in the world, but it really can be a lot of fun. Like I said earlier, you don't need a whole bunch of modifications to go out and have a good time. 
Here's Andre with a bone stock or almost bone stock discovery too. All he did was engage the center diff lock from below the vehicle and it seemed like he slapped on some BF Goodrich mud terrain tires from his old discovery too. He managed to go through almost all of these mud holes. He only had a problem with the last one. That's when he backed up and made his way out. And then he went around all these water holes. And it's kind of slippery on the side there's so much water that fell, so much rain that fell over the summer. And he was just slipping and sliding and I just wish I would have caught this on video. I said it before and I'll say it again. It's just amazing how much fun you can have even in a stock vehicle.
Easy, easy. Well, that's about it for today. From all of us here at 4x4 Adventure Canada, I'd like to thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. Don't forget to hit that like button and feel free to leave any comments below. Remember when I stalled yesterday towards the beginning of the trail and all I thought it was was a little crack in the air filter casing? Well it seems to be a bit more than that. On the way out of the trail yesterday I noticed I was having to use a bit more power than normal in some of the basic obstacles. I managed to make it back to Andres, that's where we realized that the map center is burnt. Basically got water and mud into the intake manifold right up into the throttle body. I managed to make it home all right. When I woke up the next morning to start the vehicle, there was no power at all. So I had to call a tow truck and bring it to its original home, Vig Auto, Ville Saint Pierre, where Igor took care of it and hopefully I'll be back on the trail soon enough.